to break any addiction. During the coming tribulation, if the demons had physical bodies, they would blot out the sun. I am more powerful than all the demons, so have no fear of them, and call on me and my angels to protect you from their attacks. It is only when the souls give their assent that they are opening portals for the devil to enter and control them. So bring souls to confession so I can heal them and close any portals to the, to, to the devil. I love all sinners and I want to save every soul. It is by the soul's free will choice to choose to follow me that will help save that soul. Those souls who reject my love are risking hell if they do not change before they die. Pray for your soul, the souls of all sinners, and the souls in purgatory. If you want to receive some of these messages I'm going to share with you in October here, you can go to my website, johnleary.com, and you can read the, the latest ones here. This was a message he gave to me on October 1st. A lot of these are, some of them are getting pretty serious. This one was about, from St. Therese of Lisieux on October 1st, she's one of my spiritual directors, literally. <laughs> I could see St. Therese come to give the message. And St. Therese says, my dear son, it has been a while since I gave you a message. I am thankful that you prayed your novena of the 24 glory deeds to my intercession. I want to bless all of you, and I pray that you can follow my little way in your life. Give up all of your actions to Jesus, and he will bless you for all of your good works. You see me in my statues, that I am carrying my cross and my red roses to honor Jesus. Jesus calls us to pick up our cross of life and carry it through life, so we remember how he died for all of us and his crucifixion for our sins. I love my Jesus so much, and I want to be an example for all of you to follow. You remember several times in life when I sent my rose to help you. Many times people pray to me, this is St. Therese, for intentions, and I send my roses to comfort them in their troubles. Remember how I lived a simple life to gain my salvation, and all of you can live this way of loving Jesus, and he will reward you in heaven. The October 2nd message I usually receive every year from my guardian angel, St. Mark. We were out in uh, Evansville, Indiana. Sorry. Okay. Um, so this was the message that Mark gave me. I could see my guardian angel Mark come forward and St. Mark said, I am Mark and I stand before God. I thank you for praying to me every day and I watch out for your spiritual welfare constantly. When you are traveling, you keep me busy all of the time. I can attest to that one. <laughs> it definitely does. <laughs> There are so many evil distractions around you all the time in the world, in this world. Your dedication to the Blessed Mother's Rosary has kept you protected through these many years of your mission. You give praise and thanks to God in your adoration hours every day. Just as you adore God, we angels adore God every minute of every day. You have a strong faith and to spread God's word, and you work on trying to save souls as well. We've been 23 years of giving talks twice a month, uh, except for December. But that's a lot of that's a lot of talk. You have a okay. You have a strong faith to spread God's word, and you work on trying to save souls as well. Continue to stay close to Jesus, and you will keep your gifts. That's why you need the prayers. I watch over you, and you can call on my help at any time you need me. So here are a couple of the more serious ones. This was also October 2nd. I could see a large black pool of water as America is about to see a manipulation of the voting machines and possible violence by the left to try and take over Congress. Jesus said, my people, you are seeing a dark evil come over your country as the opposition party will do about anything to take back control of your Congress. You will see the social media controlled by activists that will try to win the Congress any way they can. You will see more manipulation of the polls and the voting machines as before. You could even see violence and an attempt to coup to try and take over your country. The socialists who are trying to take over will be using communist tactics 
and the people will see how truly evil they are through power and greed. The television program will continue their false accusations of whatever your president does, even though he is working hard to make your country better. The lies and disinformation will get worse, and your country could be on the brink of an instigated civil war with the one world people behind it. Pray for peace in your country, because there are evil people who are behind causing division among your people. With another one on October 4th, similar in that like that. I saw billows and billows of sweat, black smoke coming out from an active volcano. Peter said, my people, I'm showing you black clouds coming over America, more from a political conflict than from a physical volcano. I told you more demons are coming out, out of these volcanoes, adding to the evil you already have. The opposition party will do almost anything to take back power in the Senate and the House. They will flood your media with lies and disinformation to confuse your voters. They may even cause more riots at your election rallies. The goal of the One World People is a takeover of your government, and they will stop at nothing to achieve their goal of a communist takeover. These black clouds indicate an increase in violence like you have never seen before. This attack on your president's Supreme Court nominee, it was Brett Kavanaugh, is just the beginning of the opposition's desperate tactics. They could even resort to shooting your leaders like the Scalise or some other means to eliminate their competition. Pray for the safety of your government leaders who will be coming under physical attack and mild violence. This is a, this next message on October 7th was a very serious one on marriage in the church. This is one of the biggest problems we have right now. Too many people are living together in fornication and are more really not happy with that, that's for sure. I could see how Adam and Eve were together and the two became one flesh. Jesus said, my people, those couples who wish to be married should get married in my church with the sacrament of matrimony. Those couples who get married by other means can still be married in my church. Those couples who live together in fornication or homosexual marriage are living sinful lifestyle. The couples of man and woman should get married in my church also to avoid living in sin. Homosexual couples are living in sin and they cannot be married in my church. That's what our Lord says. They need to change their lifestyle to man and woman couples to get married in the church. Couples who are married in the church need to have annulments in order to get married again. Annulments can only be obtained if there were impediments in the first marriage. Parents need to encourage their children to marry in the church and not to live in fornication or adultery. It is important to live your faith in proper marriage and avoid sex outside of marriage. By following my laws, you can avoid sexual sins that could lead people to hell if they do not seek my forgiveness. That's a real serious one. Many people that are living in the wrong way, if they don't change their lives before they die, they could wind up in hell. That's very, really warning people that. This one is about the destruction of the Freedom Tower in New York City, October 8th. I could see the host of Jesus and the monstrance at adoration. Later, I saw black clouds coming into New York City with the destruction of the Freedom Tower. I just explained a little bit. For those that are familiar with uh, Jonathan Kahn's uh, Harbingers, he, he likened the uh, comparison between Israel and America. And in Israel, the, the country was consecrated in Jerusalem, and the destruction came in Jerusalem. In the United States, if you're not familiar with the history of it, George Washington, his first inaugural address, he consecrated the country to Jesus, to God. And what happened was, this was in New York City before Washington became the, the central part of the country. So this was the dedication of our country at ground zero. And then the destruction came at ground zero. This was a punishment, like in, the, in Isaiah chapter 9, a punishment for our sins. And the problem is, we did not change our ways. We did not repent like the people did at Nineveh. And because of that, when we built the Freedom Tower, we built that in defiance of God. And even Obama put, uh, we were rebuilt, and forget those three lines that he put in there. 
but it was like daring God to destroy it. I mean, it was against the in defiance of what the punishment had. That's why you know, it's going down. Absolutely. The same thing, like when they hit the Titanic, they said this the ship will never be destroyed by God. No, it was destroyed in the first voyage. So this is the same kind of thing. I could see the hope of Jesus is not to that one. You so many people, you heard a good explanation of the gospel of the Good Samaritan by the priest. You were told the first and second commandments of loving me and your neighbor as yourself. Then you were given an explanation of who your neighbor is. You are to love everyone, even those people you call your enemies. I love all of you, even those people who do not love me. I am showing you more destruction that will be brought upon you by your enemy. You are seeing the smoke and destruction of your freedom tower. The devil and the one world people are so angry at your president for undoing all of their plans, especially putting in two justices on the Supreme Court. This is why the evil ones will be striking back with a major evil event to try and stop your president from what he's doing. You are seeing the frustration of the one world people and you'll be planning more violence for your midterm elections. Pray for your country, because you'll be going through some dark times when the evil gets so bad. I will warn you when it is time to come to my refuges. This message was about um, refuges and having uh, how important it is to have water on the refuge. We did a, a, a practice run uh, with our prayer group overnight stay. We were trying not to use electricity. We were only using the water that we had. We didn't, you know, use the faucet water. And so we realized how much water you needed. But on the other hand, if you don't have fresh water, you can't survive. So we warned you. Carol wants a better view of the camera. <laughs> Take a lesson from your experience and spend the money it takes to have a well dug 
if you do not have any other source of water. This is one of your main projects of this year, and I've provided the workers and the materials you need, so you, uh, I mean, I was given some uh, inheritances to build a lot of this stuff, but on the other hand, uh, it is really important, whatever it takes to get a water. This is another important thing the Lord talked about, having a uh, one-year supply, uh, six months and one-year supply of food in your house. It can be dried food, MREs, I think kind of canned foods and stuff like that. The reason for that is that, I don't know if you've ever see, you've seen some of these hurricanes coming in. In a matter of minutes, the shelves are empty, you know what I'm trying to say? So if you have water, you have food already, you don't have to rush out to the store because you already have it. So you need it for emergencies, you need it also in case it comes a time, I know it's gonna come, when you'll be having mandated chips in the body in order to buy your food. So that, that's another reason he said to have the food. This was October 10th. I could see a museum of old houses in the late 1800s. It was kind of, we went to the Genesee um, Museum in all 1800 homes. And what he was trying to say there is when you have all your electricity turned off by many number of means, EMP or whatever, um, You'll be back in the 1800s without electricity. Think of yourself without any electricity and you're going to understand what's going to be happening. Jesus said, my son, you're walking amidst the village of old houses that do not have electricity. And I only saw one pump there for water. If you have electricity turned off for a long time, you would have little light from candles or your battery lanterns. If people do not have much food stored, they could die of starvation. There was one article we saw. If there were an EMP attack against our country that shut off all our grid, they forecast that 90% of the people would die in the first year. That's how bad we are on electricity and how we need to have some food in our home. That's why you're telling us this. If people do not have much food food store, they die of starvation. I will multiply your food at my references, so trust in me for your survival. So even if you have a few of one thing, whatever he can multiply, have something in your house that he can multiply. This is why I'm showing you my refuges, where I will feed my people so they can survive the tribulation. Many people do not have much food stored, which is why I told you to have at least six months to one year of food stored for each member of your household. My refuge builders have been working hard to prepare their refuges to receive a lot of people. At my refuges during the tribulation, you'll be living as back in the 1800s without electricity. So be thankful that I will be providing for your needs. So we put in uh, some solar panels, and I put some more in at the lower level now so I can take the snow off. We get 120 inches of snow every year. So you need to think about that. You're doing solar, for sure. The next two messages, um, I went to see the movie God's Now. I don't know if you saw it. It's a, it's a story about an abortionist who was killing babies 30 years, imagine. And all the live babies that were born, that came out at all the time, but some of the live babies, he would cut their necks. And he went to jail for doing that. And he also had one patient die. So these are two messages on abortion from seeing the God's Now movie. I could see the Lord kneeling and looking away from all the doctors who were killing his babies. Then I saw another scene where Jesus was meeting the children and kissing them. Jesus said, my people, you have heard me complain of all the babies that you are killing in abortion. It is so evil, I can no longer look at the doctors and mothers who are killing their children. You saw the Gosnell movie in the theater, and you saw the irony of how one doctor was killing five babies with scissors on their necks, and the other abortionist was killing five babies in the uterus with salt needles into the heart. It doesn't matter how you do it. Every abortion takes the life of a live baby, that is the point. And they are all murders against my fifth commandment, so we're really violating these things all the time. America is allowing one million babies to be aborted legally every year. That's what we're, that's why we're getting all these uh, disasters. It's a payment, a punishment. Very few are struggling to stop this carnage. I keep asking you to pray for your abortions to stop. Abortion is the blood on all Americans' hands, and you are paying for this in your natural disasters. 
keep praying for these mothers to have their babies and not to abort them. How can a mother kill her own child? This is not just a blob of tissue, but they are all human little babies that you are killing. The more sins you commit, the more evil will be compounded. Please stop your abortion, Elizabeth Hart, or your whole country will look like the Florida beach that was decimated by Hurricane Michael. If you saw that damage, think of that all over the country. That's really bad. This was October 13th, again, on the abortion issue. I can see the millions of small babies that have been aborted for the convenience of their mothers and the money for the doctors. You listen, my people, you have viewed in the story, they had a, a picture of Baby Boy A. They didn't actually show it in the movie, but if you go to gosnellmovie.com, you can get a picture of it. It's a 32-week-old baby, and it was born alive, and he snipped the neck, and that's what he killed him. That, that was one of the reasons he went to jail. He's in jail now for three life sentences because of that. My people, you have viewed Baby Boy A, who was 32 weeks, and he was fully formed and living before he was brutally killed by using his scissors to cut his neck. This was from the Gosnell movie that many people should see, and it could change their hearts if people so too. Just to give you some example, the whole, think of the cast of the movie. Half of the cast of the movie that were pro-life, or say pro-choice, turned to pro-life. And I think there was, uh, wow. there was another one, I forget what the other, like, somebody told me another one. It, there were a lot of people who have been affected by the movie and have changed their, their attitude completely. So that's why he's recommending us to see it. This was from the okay. When people understand how grisly it is to kill your own babies, they could change to a pro-life position, as many of the cast in the movie did. My blessed mother gave you a message that to do nothing to stop abortion is the worst sin of mission. Even in the gospel, I said how Cain should hear my words and act on them. You are praying to stop abortion, and some people even pray at the abortion clinics and counsel women not to abort their children. Even in your upcoming election, you should vote for the candidate who supports life instead of those who promote death of the unborn babies you saw in the vision. America will pay a dear price for all of your abortions and the decision of your Supreme Court to legalize abortion. Pray that this decision can be overturned and that your mothers will wake up and stop killing their children. It's a real heavy one. He talked again about addiction. It was mostly about drinking and the, and the drugs and stuff, but there are all other kinds of addictions. I had an addiction to computers. He healed me of that. That was a miracle. I could see, this October 15th, I could see a whirlpool of evil, and people without Jesus were being sucked down and controlled by demons. Jesus said, my people, when souls become addicted to drugs, alcohol, or any number of addictions, they are controlled by the demons of that addiction. In the vision, you are seeing a whirlpool of evil, when souls allow themselves to be sucked into the power of the demon of their addiction. You need prayers of deliverance, or an exorcism, or even a miracle, to break these addictions. If a soul knows about me, that soul can call on me to send my angels to break any hold of the demons on that soul. I am more powerful than these demons, that the soul needs a desire to break any addiction. When you give your yes to an addiction, you are opening a portal for the demon to control you. This is why you also need to say no to continuing any addiction to close such a portal. You also need to say yes to my help by your deliverance prayers as the long form of the St. Michael prayer. We have some at our desk there if you want some. You can also pray this prayer for your family members to deliver those souls from the demons of their addictions. Remember to pray this prayer often. We pray every day because it is your persistence in prayer that can save the soul of your family and friends. It is a, a real serious problem. It helps to stop the, um, the passing down through the generations. It stops the generations then. This was a, a message he gave about refuges, and speaking of them like the catacombs. I could see, this October 17th, I could see how the martyrs suffered for their faith from the Romans and the early church. Jesus said, my people, in the early church, many Christians were fed to the lions in the Colosseum of the Emperor. This is why the early Christians lived and were buried in the catacombs for protection. It took a strong faith to be a Christian 
because you can be killed for your faith at any time. The same persecution will be coming to this present age. When the lives of my faithful will be in danger, I will warn you when it is time to come to the new catacombs at my refuges. And the refuges are places of Our Lady's apparition, places of holy ground consecrated by the priests, um, shrines, um, monasteries, and caves. Those are the places we'll be drawn to. My prophets and the faithful have been hiding from, from persecution for many years, and it will be worse during the tribulation. You have lived in a free society in America for many years, where you have had freedom of religion. But when the atheistic communists take over, you'll be sought out to be killed by the evil ones. This is why I've asked certain faithful to set up refuge of safety, that my faithful could enter for protection with my angels. Be thankful that I'm providing safe havens for my faithful, for my angels to protect my readings. So just a quickie on the refuges. We've been doing it for maybe three years, since uh, 2015. And we had our, our new chapel and our new kitchen. And underneath, I've got three bunk beds and I've got a bottom. I have about 40, so we'd be ready for 40 people. So we have 40 beds in the house. We have more than enough dried food and MREs to help feed an army. <laughs> we got a lot of that. I did try and, and save some water. I had 17, 55 gallon drums of water. But on the other hand, like I said, we needed more water. So you will need to get a well. That's what we had to do. We also have, um, we have a lot of wood. So we can burn the wood in the fireplace. It's not a gas one, it's a regular fireplace. We did have an insert put in so it gets 70% efficiency. We also have a couple of drums of kerosene so we can, for at least a couple of winters for sure, even if we didn't multiply it, we could have enough to, to heat during the winter time. So we've done a lot of the preparations. To, so you need the, the water, you need the food, you need a place to, to, to sleep. And also you need to have your place consecrated by a priest, hopefully, to, to protect your, your refuge. These are a couple now, uh, he's speaking here about Hurricane Michael that came in to Florida, if you remember that. I could see some wire wound on a metal cord since October 17th. And Jesus said, my people, you are still saying power being restored to places hit by your latest hurricane, especially in Florida. The vision of wire is how the linesmen string new communication wire and power wire to restore power and phone service. The searching is still discovering more dead people in the rubble, fortunately. The storm moved through very quickly, but the surge and high winds have caused a catastrophic damage. It was like almost a five, hurricane five um, on the Simpsons scale. Keep praying for these victims who lost their homes and are having trouble finding food, water, and another place to live. The storm damage has spread into several states and it will take some time to restore many places back to normal. Um, people don't realize how serious that is. If you lost your home, think about what would happen, because you'd be just like these people. So it really is a serious thing. Your storms this year seem to be getting as bad or worse than last year's storms. The damage is taking a toll on your economy, and in some cases, lost crops. These storms are sending you another message, that your people need to repent and change your evil lifestyle, or you will see more punishment. You need to stop your abortions and all of your sexual sins or worse storms will come. As you see cold weather moving in, let's see that one. We can just get into this warm, let's get into the next, the next uh, east, northeast, or probably the snow. That's probably the problem. As you see cold weather moving in, you'll be facing snow storms soon. Be prepared for all of your winter problems that ice and snow can cause. Call on my help to get you through these daily trials. This next one is speaking a little bit about the election on October the 19th. I could see a vision of the Statue of Liberty in New York City Harbor. And Jesus said, my people, your coming election is not just a battle against abortion and religious freedom, but there's also a battle against the socialist or communist takeover of your government. I don't know if you know what you're saying here. Yes. And, uh, we just had a friend of ours, Father Beretta, he came from Venezuela, and the people there are eating their pets. I mean, that's how bad it is down there to eat. So we were giving him some money so he could buy some food and bring it back with him. I mean, he came last year, and he did the same. He came this year. This is how desperate these people are for food. I mean, it's really bad. So what I'm trying to say is, 
now they have a new um, they have a new president in Mexico. We're going to come to Guadalupe, but we want to get out of there before December 1st, because he's going to take over. And so you have a lot of countries being taken over by the communists. Yes. And the United States could be the next one if you allow those socialists like the Hurdy get those type of people to get in. They are not just socialists, they are openly communists. I don't know if you that's atheism. And it's everything against what our government stands for. So you really should understand how important these elections are. The opposition party is for abortion and they want free health care and free college education. There is no mention how they're going to pay for health care in college, but it will be paid for by the taxpayer at an expensive price. These things are just the beginning for establishing an atheist communist government. I warn you that the deep state wants total control over your government, including mandatory chips in the body and the mark of the beast. And that was the, the chips in the body was in the original um, Obamacare law, but they took it out at the end. So they are planning to do mandatory chips in the body of our group. That is coming. So all of your freedoms are at stake with this midterm election. There are even threats to try and impeach your president if the House or the Senate is lost to the activists. This is all the more reason to pray special movements for the pro-life forces to win this election on November 6th, or your country will never be the same. Once a takeover occurs, my faithful will soon need to come to my refuge. Trust in me to protect you from the evil forces who want to kill my faithful. And this next one he's talking about for the election, I uh, think there's a, I don't know if you're familiar with this, he had a prayer group, the blue one there. Uh, in there, they have the 24 Glory Be Prayer to St. Therese. It's, it's really a never can fail prayer. And we say it a lot, we did a lot for our first book. But I mean, there's a lot of things we prayed for. But this, our, our, our Lord was saying that we need to do this 24 Glory Be Novena right up to the election day so that the pro life forces can win. So, and he, he, we're going to be doing a prayer group for our prayer group was meeting um, that Monday before the election. And we did Monday before the election when Trump was put in. And he says that if you pray strong enough and ask, you can have the right result. So that's why it's very important. One of the reasons this came up also is, the, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there was a lot of people on the other side, I mean, some of the witches, if you know what I'm talking about, trying to put taxes on all the government officials. Yes. And so this is the reason, again, why to pray these Novena prayers. I could see the witches, this is October 20th, I could see the witches who wanted to cast taxes on President Trump, Vice President Pence, and Justice Kavanaugh. Jesus said, my people, I want you to keep praying your 24th glory be Novena to St. Therese, right up to election day. Pray to put angels of protection around your government officials. I am more powerful than these evil ones, and I will thwart any evil intent coming from these witches. Your prayers are more powerful than these hexes. Trust me in your prayers now and for an election of pro-life candidates. By keeping faith in me, I will guard my faithful through the coming evil trials. Have trust in me and keep storming heaven with your prayers. Remember what I told you. Ask in my name and you'll receive your request. So we did the same thing before Trump's election. We can do the same thing for the election. Now this one, is, as you get toward the end of the year, many people are, I don't know about that, everybody thinks about it, but we all are mortal. We know one day we're gonna die. And at the end of the year, it's, it's like when you see the leaves falling off, and it's been slow falling. But when you start seeing the leaves falling off, you start thinking about the trees and everything's dying in nature. So we have the same thing. So he's, he's had a lot of time back here. This was October 22nd. I was praying for him. I could see a window, and I was putting in the storm window in preparation for winter. So as you prepare things for winter, he's going to draw a comparison of preparing your soul. Because for winter, it's seasonal. But for your soul, it's year-round. So you can die anytime. <laughs> Jesus said, my son, you are making preparations for winter by taking in your hoses, closing your storm windows, and getting your snowblower ready to when we're up. This is, we had 120 inches last year, so we definitely want to have a snowblower ready. Um, you also put away your lawn chairs and your window air conditioners. 
When it gets cold, you also will need your hat and gloves and stuff those out too. Each season has its own things to get ready. Now, here's the thing. Your spiritual life should be ready all year round with your prayers, masses, and adoration, and frequent confessions. This is really how we keep close to God. You always need to be ready to meet me at your judgment when you will die. You could die at any time, which is why you should always be prepared for your judgment. Many people may be prepared for your seasons of hot and cold, but not everyone is concerned to be spiritually ready for their death. Death can come suddenly in an accident or a heart attack. Terminal cancers like terminal cases like cancer can take some time, but the soul has time to get right with me. All Christians should recognize their mortal nature and be prepared to die. Some people put off their spiritual preparation because they think they have many years to live. Do not put off getting rest, getting and keeping your soul clean because you may not have time if you die suddenly. You are not ready to live unless you are ready to die and meet me at your judgment. So that's another example of how we need to be ready. Just a couple more here and I'll be done. Um, October 23rd. I could see people waiting patiently for the bride to come down the aisle. And Jesus said, my people, being patient and waiting for someone to arrive can test your patience. You've probably been there. When it is a wedding, it is a more formal occasion, so people are a little more forgiving if someone is late, like the bride. Even in traffic, well, there's a hard one, you may be tested by slow drivers, so learn to not rush so much. When you are waiting for the warning, well, this is, this is interesting. People have asked me just about the warning so many times. When is the warning going to happen? And this was a message, uh, literally about God the Father, not to be, uh, you know, complaining. Uh, when you are waiting for the warning or for me to come back to earth, this is even more than a formal event. People who lived before my birth waited a long time for the Messiah to come. What you are seeing is that everything happens according to God the Father's timing and not before. So as you are patient for earthly times, do not criticize God the Father for not sending me sooner. Some of you have little patience, and this could drive you to swearing in anger. Do not let delays upset you and pray to be more patient. Your fast-paced society expects everything to happen right away. But for heaven, time is not as important for when events are chosen. That's a very important message. Not to be criticizing God for not sending Jesus. And some people may not understand it, but when they ask for the warning, it's going to be a very difficult time. So I don't know if you want to ask for it sooner, but he knows when to do it right. But the big thing is don't criticize God or don't think we should have had it sooner because this is all God's plan. Everything happens according to God's plan, no matter what we think. It's going to happen in this way only. Um, one last one here on the election of abortion, and I'll be honest with you. Um, October 24th. I can see rivers overflowing from destructive hurricanes. And Jesus said, my people, you have seen one of your worst hurricane seasons with Florence and Michael in the Atlantic and many storms and typhoons in the Pacific Ocean. Each year, your storms have taken a toll of damage on your buildings and your economy. Even your stock market is having its own problems. There is an increase in global warming that can enhance these storms but it is happening. Oh, let me just explain a little bit. <clears throat> Some of the people have been, like Al Gore, <laughs> have been talking about carbon dioxide causing the global warming. Well, it's wrong science. If you look up the real cases, you'll see that it has fluctuated levels of carbon dioxide don't correspond to the heating increases. What, what you may not know, and the Lord asked me to look this up, if you want to know why we're getting hotter summers, this is interesting. I looked it up, and they were saying, we are in the middle of a polar shift. You know what I'm saying? What happens is, you have, just a little bit of science here, you have the core of the Earth. It's uh, iron, it's iron metal, I mean, it's molten core iron. So you have a north and a south. And what's happening is, the pole is shifting. In other words, every year, the magnetic north pole is moving 90, uh, 90 miles, I think, yeah, 40, 40, 40, or 40, sorry, 40 miles every, every, um, every year. And what it, as it moves towards Russia. So that's part of it. 
The other thing they measure is the, we have two protections to keep the sun from burning our skin. The one is the ozone layer, and the other is called the magnetosphere. It's like a big donut surrounding the earth. And it's, it's, by, it's a magnet thing that repels the, the sun's, the solar wind from the sun. So what's happening, they measured over the last 200 years, that magnetism, the strength of the magnetism of that magnetosphere is reduced 15%. And it's reducing 5% every 10 years, it's on an increase. So it's just about time to go into a polar shift. There's been over 300 polar shifts in the course of the Earth. So this is why we're getting the heat in the summer. I don't know if you know that. You can look it up, you can look it up because I did the research on it. So he's talking about that. That's what he means here. So um, there is increase in global warming that can enhance these storms, but it is happening on account of your decreasing magnetism of your magnetosphere and from the heart machine, which is the, um, the heart machine is a, a billion watt, um, basically a magnet, it's a kind of big magnet, and they, they can send up a billion watt microwave and make it come down to create earthquakes, or they can even sandy the storm. They can make the storm go into, they can change the currents. But they, trust me, they can't give you all the explanations for it. But they can cause earthquakes and they can change the weather by changing the, the they change the, the lows and the highs. And they, they, if, you, if you see a high or a low staying in one place for over a few days, it's the heart machine being used. And that's the one that's in Kokona, Alaska. The one where people control that. And they're causing us bad things from that. So those are two sources of causing our problems in addition to what the Lord faces. These storms are also a punishment on America for your many abortions as portrayed in the God's Now movie. Your law decisions in your courts still allow legal abortions which are against my laws. You know deep down in your soul that abortion is murdering my babies even if you do not want to admit it. These callous, this callous killing of babies I told you needs to stop, or I will stop it with even more serious disasters or wars. Listen to my words that America needs to stop killing a million of my babies every year. Keep praying to stop abortion and pray for pro-life candidates to win and change your evil laws. Keep praying your 24 ideas to St. Perez so the midterm elections can save your country from further destruction. Thank you very much. Thank you.